Okay, it's uh, time for our presentation from I.D. Rosenberg, who's the uh, CTO and co-founder of VideoFlow. So this is um, wrist technology connection bitrate optimi optimization. So it's not directly tied to wrist, it can work for any um, RTP stream, but it's an interesting technique for um, improving the um, performance of uh, networks and optimizing how much throughput you can actually get on a real system. So, take it away, Adi. Now you are. Check. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. So big audience. Hi, I'm Adi Rosenberg. I'm with VideoFlow. Um, please excuse me. I'm speaking Hebrew, not English, but I hope you will understand me as much as I can. So. What we are dealing today is an advanced topic, basically optimizing some of the delivery problems that people face but don't understand what's going on or, or ways to do that. And that's it. So, okay. so we will go over the problem Propose a solution. Propose a solution. Explain the means and show you diagrams. And we will also show how it is, can be used in wrist and in ST2110, 2110, and ask, answer some question if you have. So let's understand the problem. Today, most of the most of the streaming uh, solution sends stream or streams through a link, as they should. But they don't know if the recipient is listening on the other end. There's no information. Unless it's a, a wrist stream that you have an RTCP that communicates back to you, you have no visibility of what is going on. You just stream and forget. But in the good old years, five years ago, many people used the multicast method. And with multicast, they were RGMP, so they were listener. An IGMP receiver, a, a receiver will send IGMP messages to a router or to a switch, and by that, the network could know that there is still a listener, so there was some visibility of what is going on. So when there was a listener, then a data was forwarded to him, and he was receiving the data, so we, we, had to, we could know what is going on. So, the in this presentation, I will assume that the streams are multicast capable. I'm not going to talk about the path that they are taking, but rather how to optimize that when you don't have a true multicast system, you don't have routers, switches, SNMP snooping, but we just mimic those. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about multicast and IGMP. Client issue IGMP join membership report to receive consume multicast stream. A client may signal leave. Leave or join. Uh, or, or no, sorry, or no longer membership report signal to the end of transmission. Basically you can say, hey, I'm done listening. Leave me out of the stream. IGMP snooping router or switch in a, with advanced protocol is involved in the delivery of the content to the listener. But multicast does not exist on top of open internet because most ISPs will block it up. So people would use tunneling private networks to do that. But most of the operation in the US and worldwide are still keeping up with multicast for their operation. And we need to find a solution to give them the same experience as was in the good, multi, the good old multicast networks. So, to do that. so let's look at a typical network. This is the sender. We have three streams here. This is a network that is made out of multiple endpoints that can receive and propagate the stream inside the network or out inside the head end or outside the full mesh network. And here are the listeners. We start by sending multicast stream out. 
they're propagating. We never know in this situation if we don't have, don't have IGMP snooping capability, who is listening? Hence, we are wasting a lot of bandwidth by doing so. Bandwidth is propagating and consumed, and that bandwidth causes packet loss. That packet loss will be solved by RIST, and in the future in the ST2110-1, but right now it consumes critical bandwidth. So in this case, we are sending free stream, but we have only one taker and a client behind it. But this, the blue and the green are just wasted bandwidth that just takes critical bits. In this example, we have three takers here, but we have only two takers here. So the blue line, which is not propagated here, is also uh, wasted because we have only two takers receiving that. This instance propagates what he received but he has no takers. This one has one taker, so it is receiving. So we want to bring the same IGMP snooping capability and routability back to these systems, whether that is using a tunnel or DTLS with multiplexing, but we want to bring, bring it back. So what is, as I said, what is wrong with just streaming? Bandwidth is wasted, meaning that you don't know who is the client, you just stream, hope for the best, you just create more and more pressure on your network and you can create congestion. That will affect the streams that are consumed because we have packet loss. We, don't, we want to reduce, if we reduce the bandwidth, just like the pre previous presentation, more bandwidth, more pressure, more probability of problems. We want to reduce the bandwidth which is unused and only use that when it is truly needed. As, as I said, the receiver client may not have a listener and so the bandwidth is once again wasted. So the new approach, or basically an old approach, what happened with this presentation, I don't know. Uh, use rever reverse waterfall IGMP query to the client. Big name, big approach. The idea is that we assume that the paths are point to point between, take, between endpoints. One peer is a sender and another one is a receiver. A peer receiver can act as a sender to a, a remote, it can propagate the streams forward. For example, we can send data to the cloud. The cloud will take that and propagate that as a distribution to other locations, other clouds, other uh, functionalities or companies. Each stream element will now include an IGMP query, which is basically a standard requirement of any device right now that can issue membership reports. Those may be IGMP v2 or IGMP v3 which is standard requirement in most equipment today. So let's talk about what is an IGMP query. IGMP is a network layer, layer three, protocol used to establish membership in a multicast group and can register link listeners to a router or a switch to receive specific multicast traffic. To optimize multi multicast traffic, an IGMP snooping is used. An IGMP snooping, to those who don't know, is basically tell the, the network element to check what multicast is tra traveling through its, uh, is, is a bus network, and then listen to requests, so only for, and then store that, that, that information, and only if somebody truly requests the stream, the multicast stream, then propagate that. That saves a lot of bandwidth inside an in operation center, head end, and so on. Each most multicast listener must issue IGMP join when he joins the stream, leave when we, he leaves the stream, or in IGMP v3, it's called membership reports. It also needs to report occasionally that he's still consuming the data, he still wants to listen. So the query function basically asks the network and devices 
Who is still listening? Is there still, because a device can be, can die, can be disconnected, and we don't want to stream data to it. So the IGMP querier basically asks the question, is there a listener among you that can be either zero, which is fine, or they can be one or multiple? In that case, it will store that information. But having that knowledge basically gives us the ability to optimize the network. So how does the IGMP query works in this implementation? Each output stream is now, a, is now associated with IGMP query. Basically, if you have a multicast, 2 to 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, you will have an IGMP query that will ask who is listening to 2 to 5, 5, 5, 5. The IGMP query will receive IGMP listening IGMP join request and register that and allow streaming to that destination, to that taker. But it also will start sending periodically IGMP query question. Are you still listening? Are you still out there? And it is up to, in every IGMP capable device must answer, yes, I'm still here. That can be on a point-to-point -point network, that can be on a multi-point network that has multiple consumers. <coughs> Sorry. If no report is detected, the receiver is able to signal to disable its input stream, meaning that what's coming in and notify its sender that maybe there's no taker on, on its output inside to notify him, hey, I have no client, nobody listening, stop bothering me and just don't waste the bandwidth. So then the other the sender can stop sending and then we get network optimization because now we reduce the bandwidth. When a new client comes on and sends an IGMP membership report, we then propagate that to the stream IGMP querier and then forward that to the original sender to, com to commence streaming. And now we bring, we bring the signal just like a router and a multicast router will do. So let's see how does it look. In this example, it's a mix of IGMP v2 and v3. We have two devices, 10.13.1.202, 10.13.1.106. The 202 is a querier, and it sends an IGMP query report asking who is listening to 230.001. And there is a listener, and it says, hey, hey, it's me. I'm here. I'm listening. Don't, don't stop. So there's the query. We have the response. Another, so it goes and goes periodically until suddenly there is a leave. The sender says, hey, I'm done. And then the, quer the query will continue. But basically, there will be no response. Upon receiving that, it will signal its own streaming source that there is no more listener, you can stop transmitting to me. So let's see, let's build up the system. So in this example, this is the last mile. We have a receiver, has three streams. We have a multicast in coming in. We have here IGP membership block. We have a multicast output, we have an IJP querier that probes this stream, only this stream, and so on. In this case, we can see we have two listeners to the same multicast, so both of them will answer. In this case, we have only one, and so on. Let's grow the network. Let maybe this is, this would maybe a cloud device. So. Once again, the same, this is what we had in the previous slide, and this is the same connect connection to the cloud or to a uh, central element. And now, the network... Wait a second. I'm, okay. Network optimization is achieved. The reduction of traffic reduces the pressure of the IP... So I think it's jumping the slide. Basically, we're reducing the pressure on the IP network. Unclaimed streams are now reduced from the network. And 
and, they, and they are they and or introduce a full client engagement. The technique is very is, is a small scale implementation of the multicast network, and let's see that in action. So basically, we have the clients. When the clients connect, then and only then streams are propagated. No client. If there is no client or a client left, message is transmitted here. No stream is sent sent out. So now instead of the the diagram that we had in the beginning that we were streaming all the time, we achieved optimization in resources. Less bandwidth is consumed on in this with this technique. Now, oh, so basically, listener drops. Or just listener drops the connection, and this is basically removed and then removed, and then removed. When this can, will come back, this will signal this entity, that will propagate the request here, here, and here, and then the streams will come flowing through. Let's talk about implementations. RIST, in one of its advanced profiles, includes IGMP capability. My proposal is to use this technique to add that capability that capability because we now will be able to optimize the risk to have that uh, bandwidth saving and that's what we need when we use the open internet or any type of network then it uh, will make it uh, even stronger if IGMP is not supported by the underlying network what risk can do is basically add an IGMP membership report mimicking message in the RTCP that we already have sent between peers. The same can be said for ST2110, which is also multicast based in some installation, especially for one, that's, that technique will reduce once again the pressure on the network. And if IGP, technique, and IGP query technique can also reduce the unused feeds of backups and so on that are maybe not consumed and that will save bandwidth and pressure on the network. Real-time real application example will be, let's say, can be IPTV delivery. We have today, VideoFlow has today a client that uses such technique to optimize its network. Instead of pushing 80 streams to no listener on the other end that may consume one, two, maybe 10, we are now reduce its network dependency and, um, and uh, usage by almost 70%. And only when a client is actually asking for multicast, then we propagate that to it. The bandwidth saving was a tremendous improvement because now we have less packet loss, we have less jitter, less congestion, less network failover because we consume the bandwidth that is only required by takers. 5G common channel use. The 5G is going to have a lot of multicasts going over its common channel. Once again, this technique will optimize that. Backup links. Why do we need to send the backup link all the time? We can just activate it only when the primary goes down. There will be some penalty for the switchover, but the bandwidth saving is tremendous. It's a 50% bandwidth saving on a simple, with a simple application if you are willing to, get the, to have the hit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adi. Um, anybody have any questions? Sure. Okay. Okay. I'll be gentle. <laughs> I'll be gentle. Um, what you described looks a lot like what um, traditional multicast routers will do. If you build your network with all, well, all the gray boxes uh, with routers running PIM or DVMRP or whatever, you just get that. And Correct. in fact, you get better optimization because they use shorter spas. Correct. So w w where are you applying this? I'm applying that where there is no router. When I'm streaming to the, for instance, if I need to do a contribution and then distribution, by way of AWS, for instance, I don't have a router in between. 
I have no communication and no visibility of any router. All I have is a whole server point, rendezvous point in AWS. I don't know where the router is. That's exactly the point. We are taking the exactly need that we had before with the routers and switches, but with the add-on of a simple IGMP query, which you can find as an open source, you bring back that capability to this, to the, to this environment. Now, instead of AWS streaming 80 streams to unknown destinations, it will only send 20 streams because it, now it can detect there are true takers on the link. So it's an optimization for AWS in that sense, not sending too much data. If you pay by the data that you send, you save tons of money, monthly money, because you have this simple technique to optimize your network because you don't have access. Those routers are gone now, basically. You don't see them, you don't have visibility. You have a VPN, you have a tunnel, you have a way. Those routers are, are, not, they are not in your original path as it would be in your head end when you are running in the clear. So that basically, this exact, the idea came to mimic that router switch capability back to the open internet and when you don't see those routers. So you're basically re-implementing something like PIM. Correct. Um, can, couldn't you? I'm not still, I'm just using, reusing old stuff. Are you reusing old stuff? For new technology. Yeah, you, you can always, in just any Cisco router, you can open a, a multicast tunnel between the two routers. This is, but that's not your application, right? I don't see a multi, uh, Cisco router on AWS. Okay. I see a wrist, I see a wrist uh, receiver, wrist uh, server in AWS. So that's a point to point. And then uh, that wrist receiver in AWS is turning around and sending it to, to another wrist receiver. And that receiver actually has that capability. And this profile, we basically will mimic exactly. Okay, uh, so. That's so, the optimization. So you're basically re-implementing uh, a simpler version of PIM or DVMRP or whatever in the, uh, in the set of receivers they receive and set of other receivers. Okay. That's why it's simple. It's called simple. Simple. Yes. No, no, no. Did you think about uh, putting any routing smarts to optimize the tree? Yes, but then I would have to go to AWS, knock on the door, and hopefully that somebody answers me. But if I have it in wrist or something similar, it's much more practical because it's already there. Okay, so um, you going to talk with the IT guys, tell them, hey, I need to get access to your IT equipment. They will uh, throw me away through the window, run me over <laughs> 10 times, and then ask, who was that? <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm talking about is, if, if your network is just a tree, then it doesn't matter because the optimum path is what you t you're taking. But basically, you have a, if you have a mesh network of your devices, it doesn't matter what's underlying, you can maybe optimize the path between those devices without knowledge or, or being run over by the uh, IT guys at AWS. But maybe this is a separate discussion. The idea is that with RIST and other solutions, you create your own paths, you create your own links. They are outside the scope of AWS. So you are now in control of your destiny. Okay. So now you can optimize them. If I have a tree type of architecture, I don't want to stream to everybody if I don't have takers on the other end. If I don't have leaves, why should I stream? Today, what I'm doing is that without this technique or other advanced techniques that uh, companies have, I would have to from roots, I will have to stand to all the, all the leaves in the tree without knowing if there is a leaf, leaf uh, afterwards. So same, same problem, <laughs> the much cost routing support. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Heidi. That was really interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.